Every Bending Ability in Avatar Bending is the ability to manipulate an element and is significant to many aspects of life in the world. There are five known bending arts. Four of them bend a specific physical element, while the fifth bends the energy within the human body itself. The only case of any one person being able to bend multiple elements is the Avatar, who has the ability to practice all five bending arts. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over every bending ability in Avatar. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. I just posted a new video on my vlog channel, and I'd really appreciate it if you guys would check it out. In the video, we held an extreme turkey eating contest for Thanksgiving and gave away a whole bunch of prizes. It was a fun video to film, and I really hope you guys enjoy it. I'll link to it on the screen now, in the description, and in a pinned comment, so if you guys want to check it out, you shouldn't have any trouble finding it. And with that out of the way, let's get back to the video! Yeah! Every Bending Ability in Avatar Air Scooter Ice Bullets, Mud Bending Fire with Air Blast and Earth Levitation Nah, I'm just messing with you. But hey, if this video gets enough views, and if you guys tell the Amagi to pay me a lot of money, I just might go through with it. But for now, let's do this documentary style. Every Bending Ability in Avatar Air Bending Air bending is the bending art used by the air nomads. The flying bison were the original airbenders. It concentrates on speed and evasion, foregoing a strong offense for a greater defense. Although apparently lacking fatal finishing moves, it is the most dynamic of all the bending arts. As the element of freedom, airbenders use their capability to bend unencumbered by the ground or any other environmental factors, and use their own momentum as a weapon evading attacks with astounding agility to tire their opponents out, or building up massive inertia for explosive gusts of wind to make their counterattacks finishing moves. When resorting to physical confrontation, airbenders are able to harness the immense, intangible power of wind. Airbenders can use a flight technique by operating a glider and using the air to provide thrust and lift. Airbending's opposite is earthbending and the confrontational style that serves as its foundation. During the era of Rava, the power of air was temporarily bestowed on the inhabitants who lived on a giant lion turtle while they left the village to stock up on food. After permanently leaving the care of the lion turtle, the former inhabitants eventually learned airbending from the flying bison, a sacred creature in the air nomad culture. The bison typically used their massive beaver-like tail to create gusts of wind, and as the name suggests, can fly without any visible means of propulsion. It's also said that the airbenders borrowed the arrow mark from the flying bison for the design of their traditional tattoos. These markings symbolize one's mastery of the airbending art and are given to a practitioner once their training is complete. Unlike other nations, all air nomads were born as airbenders due to the culture's strong ties to spirituality. Airball An airbender can create a compressed ball of air by moving their hands together in a circular motion. This technique has many applications, such as levitating small objects or trapping opponents. Iki demonstrated this technique while playing with flying bison calves, giving them something to chase. Airballs can also be used in a more offensive manner. Propelled forward similarly to a cannonball, they can knock an opponent backward and off balance. Air Blast A more offensive maneuver involving a direct pulse or jet of compressed air shot from the hands, feet, or mouth. The force of this attack is generated more from the bender's own power rather than assisted by momentum. The blast can reach further distances with greater accuracy and is used to inflict greater damage. Aang once used this technique to completely shatter one of the Fire Navy's projectile rocks in mid-air with a single powerful kick. He was also able to use two air blasts at once to defend against Combustion Man's unique firebending ability. The blasts can also be maintained for prolonged periods in order to push objects back. The airbenders of the new Air Nation demonstrated this by simultaneously attacking Kuvira's enormous mecha suit. Air Bomb A technique that creates a powerful, outward-moving air current in all directions around the bender. Usually performed after landing on the ground from above, this airbending form has great concussive force and the capacity to completely blow away anything within its radius. Air Cushion Airbenders can make a cushion out of air to break anyone's fall, including their own. Tenzin used this to cushion his own fall after an equalist mecha tank knocked him roughly against the side of a building. 
Opal made use of this technique to secure the safe landing of three thieves who were flung out of their car by Kai's attack during their patrol. Air Funnel Similar to an air vortex, but on a smaller scale, Aang inventively used this technique as a cannon by creating a small air funnel through which small coal projectiles could be loaded and fired out of the opposite end. Air Manipulation By using circular evasive movements, airbenders build up a large amount of energy and momentum, which is released through powerful moves. It also allows for wind-based counterattacks that knock opponents off balance, mimicking the sudden directional shifts of air currents. Attacks vary from simple gusts of wind to miniature tornadoes and cyclones, maintaining the circular theme. Even a simple movement can create an air gust, and airbenders increase the power of their moves by performing larger sweeps and spins, using the momentum of their movement to produce larger gusts. This is also demonstrated with their use of a staff or fans to increase or create precision within the air currents. Similarly, airbenders can also augment the momentum of thrown objects. Air Punch or Kick Another more offensive move than is typical of airbending discipline, air punches or air kicks are small compressed formations of air that can be fired off from the fists or feet of an airbender. This is similar to many firebending abilities and the air blast in the sense that it involves the firing of compressed or solidified air at an enemy in a disjunct fashion. In other words, the bender does not create a single great stream of air. This move was seen when Aang produced several air punches in rapid succession toward a practice Fire Lord dummy. Avatar Korra was able to use two pairs of air punches in rapid succession and an air kick to knock Amon off his feet. Korra used the air punch technique on the ground, spewing the bent air within a radius. She also used an air kick when fighting the police officers who were tracking down Kai. Air Shield The most common defensive tactic for an airbender involves circling enemies, suddenly changing direction when attacked, and evading by physical movement rather than bending. However, an airbender can still deflect attacks as needed by throwing up gusts of air close to their bodies as a shield. This is rarely to stop attacks directly and more often to push the attack aside, conserving energy and allowing them to turn the movement into an attack at the same moment. Kai used an air shield in 171 AG to protect himself from police combustion beams. He was able to deflect enough of the blast to prevent it from killing him, although the close proximity of the detonation knocked him out. Air Swipe The air swipe is both a defensive and offensive technique in which an airbender conjures a crescent-shaped wave of compressed air capable of deflecting colossal projectiles such as the catapulted flaming rocks often used by the Fire Navy, or redirecting them back to the attacker. Aang used this technique while battling with Azula during the invasion of the Fire Nation. Jinora also used this technique to knock back the lieutenant when he invaded Air Temple Island, and Korra used the Avatar state to enhance the power of this technique to take down Unalak's dark spirits. Air Wheel This is a modified version of the air scooter invented by Tenzin. Air is rapidly spun around the airbender and carries the person inside the wheel of air. It is also able to cut through solid objects. Tenzin used this technique during the battle at the Equalist Factory. Breath of Wind Similar to the standard air jet, but created from the mouth and lungs, it requires extremely good breath control to employ effectively. Size and focus are easily controlled, from narrow jets that can strike targets as small as insects, to large gale-force gusts capable of cooling magma into solidified rock. This has been exhibited by both Aang and Roku. By using this technique, an airbender can magnify the sound waves generated by a whistle or another instrument. Aang demonstrated this technique while he was trying to lead a number of animals to the agrarian zone of Ba Sing Se, as he used airbending to blow his bison whistle, sending massive sound waves throughout the city to call all the animals. His son Tenzin later performed a similar feat in an attempt to wake up the new airbenders for an early morning hike. Enhanced Agility Air movements can also be used as a levitation aid. Airbenders are able to jump high and far by riding on strong gusts of wind, and can also slow or deflect falls by creating cushions of air. The constant movement required by this art makes airbenders naturally flexible and agile, making masters of the art difficult to hit. Even without the use of bending, they can easily maneuver around an opponent by ducking, jumping, and sidestepping, appearing to flow around their opponents without expending any energy at all, letting the opponent tire themselves out, and thus creating exploitable openings. 
the conservation of energy combined with high stamina gives them an advantage in prolonged combat. Toph Beifong, a blind earthbender who used her bending to tell where people were walking or running in relation to her, once told Aang that she could easily identify his walk by the fact that he had a light step. Enhanced Speed Airbenders enhance their movement in battle. They can run swiftly by decreasing air resistance around them and even sprint across or run up vertical surfaces by generating a wind current behind themselves to propel themselves forward. Aang used this to run many times faster than an average human and maintain this for long periods, allowing him to travel long distances without gliding or jumping. When used by a skilled airbender, this technique can enable the airbender to use it to travel at a speed almost too swift for the naked eye to be able to see properly. A master airbender can also use this technique to briefly run across water. Heat Regulation Airbenders are able to warm themselves using proper breathing techniques, allowing them to thrive in frigid environments with relative ease. Aang first demonstrated this in the Southern Water Tribe, maintaining his body heat without the need for a parka or any additional layers of clothing. Air Pull A technique used to bring people or objects toward the airbender. It was used by Aang many times, such as when he took up the fans dropped on the ground to fight Zuko on Kyoshi Island, and pulled Professor Zay out of harm's way in Wan Chitong's library, as well as by Appa, who used this technique to steal cabbages from an animal trainer while his back was turned. Tenzin also demonstrated it when he tried to save Saikan from a mecha tank outfitted with a magnet, and although new to the art, Zaheer was also capable of this technique, as he used it to bring his staff toward him in his fight with Kaya. Korra demonstrated this move too, using it to nab the driver of the truck thought to contain a kidnapped Wu toward her. Air Blades A more offensive move than is typically used in airbending, this involves a focused slicing air current that can cut through stone or timber with relative ease. This is frequently conjured with a staff rather than the body, using the narrow profile of the object to create a more focused and precise air movement. Air Cocoon a master airbender can rotate while jumping to wrap themselves in a cocoon of wind. This was demonstrated by Tenzin to dodge one of Minghua's ice spikes and protected him from a potentially fatal combustion blast from Pali. This technique utilizes an airbender's trademark fluid and dynamic movement style. Air Propulsion A skilled airbender can propel themselves forward at a great speed by negating the effect of wind resistance. Avatar Korra used this in the Avatar state during her battle with Kuvira. Air Spout Similar to the water spout, master airbenders are able to rotate and control the direction of an air spout enough to levitate themselves off the ground and remain in the air for as long as they wish to or can maintain it. The first known use of this technique was by Avatar Wan during the battle in the Spirit Wilds, when he generated an air spout shortly after fusing with Rava in an attempt to mediate the escalating conflict. Avatar Wan would later use the technique to mediate the warring human factions after harmonic convergence by rising himself into the air while bending the other three elements. Avatar Roku used this technique in order to speak face to face with Fire Lord Sozin, who was suspended in the air by an earth column. In 170 AG, Tenzin used an air spout when he fought several equalists who tried to abduct him at City Hall during the battle for Republic City. Avatar Korra later used this technique while in the Avatar state at the South Pole, and again during her duel with Kuvira. Air Vortex a spinning funnel of air of varying size, the air vortex can be used to trap or disorient opponents, as well as to deflect any objects thrown at it. Aang used this technique to form an air column during his duel with Bumi to throw aside a large boulder. Air Wake By running in a circle and instantly building massive momentum, a master airbender can shoot a blast of highly compressed air shaped like the user's body at a target. This move seems to have an extremely high concussive force. It was first used by Aang in the Crystal Catacombs against Zuko. Suffocation A rather sinister technique of airbending, whereby an airbender manipulates the flow of air within a person's respiratory system, extracting it from the lungs via the nostrils and mouth, and prevents any new intake of breath by forming a ball of air around the head, thus eventually killing the victim by suffocation. This technique was first demonstrated by Zaheer on Earth Queen Hu Ting to lethal effect and he later used it on Avatar Korra, though it was interrupted before she could suffocate. Levitation In the same way flying bison can fly and stay aloft for extended periods of time, a master airbender can achieve this same feat by generating and controlling air to form a cloud-like board under their feet and surf through the air. 
thereby emulating flight. Avatar Kyoshi utilizes this technique in a more lethal way by levitating and subsequently dropping Xu Ping An during a duel, making him fall to his death. Tornado. This is a smaller scale version of the air vortex which airbending masters can use as a means of both combat and transportation. By encircling themselves in a spiraling air current, masters can travel at high speeds and even ascend near vertical drops as demonstrated by Aang during the Battle of Wulong Forest, where he narrowly avoided a lightning blast from Fire Lord Ozai by creating a mini tornado and moving to the top of a rock column. Aang was also seen wielding this maneuver on the offensive against Combustion Man at the Western Air Temple, where he summoned the tornado with a kick in midair to conjure a powerful ranged attack. When several airbenders work together, this technique can also be used to create a much larger and more powerful tornado, such as when Jinora and the new airbenders used it to save Korra from Zaheer. Air Sphere With this technique, the Avatar creates a sphere of air around them, allowing them to hover for extended periods of time or fly at high speeds. This sphere also acts as a barrier to protect the Avatar, strong enough to withstand a high-velocity impact with a rock. Aang was also able to use this technique underwater, forming a protective pocket of air around several people and a flying bison. Roku used a variation of this technique when defending his island from the volcano, and Wan and Korra both used it to restrain Vatu in their respective battles against him. Strong Winds it is possible for the Avatar to unleash extremely powerful winds. During the battle at Wulong Forest, while extinguishing three enormous fire whips, Aang unleashed a straightforward wind attack at Ozai. While Ozai seemingly did not take much damage from the hit, a nearby rock pillar crumbled and collapsed in a matter of seconds. This move was also used by Avatar Kyoshi to create Kyoshi Island, using the powerful winds to push the landmass into the sea. Tornadoes and Hurricanes in addition to large and powerful air movements, an Avatar-level airbender can create massive tornadoes and hurricanes at will. Yang Chen demonstrated this as part of showing the power the Avatar state had. Air Scooter The Air Scooter is a form of transportation invented by Aang in 2BG. It's a spherical ball of air that can be ridden by balancing on it like a top. He used the technique in many episodes, usually to provide quick bursts of speed as well as to overcome vertical surfaces, including during the battle on the Fire Nation drill in order to scale the wall of Ba Sing Se. The air scooter also allowed levitation for short periods, about 5 to 10 seconds in a stationary position. The air scooter was seen in the opening credits of every episode except the first, and it first appeared in an actual episode when Aang used it to escape Zuko's ship. It was Aang's invention of this technique that subsequently earned him his tattoos and title of a master at such a young age. He taught the move to his airbending friends, and despite initial failure, they eventually mastered the art well enough to develop a game that requires the use of the air scooter. Aang is also capable of conjuring an air scooter from little balls of air. As an adult, he could create air scooters that were larger than those he conjured as a child, and could ride them while standing upright. Air scooters are not restricted to holding a single rider, as they can be used to transport others as well. Cloud Bending since clouds are made from air and water, a skilled airbender can easily manipulate them into various shapes. Aang, with assistance from Katara, demonstrated this technique during Team Avatar's stay in Makapu Village to provide a message to the nearby villagers, and he later did the same to disguise their flights on Appa while moving about the Fire Nation. During the era of Rava, citizens of Air Lion Turtles were able to create cloud platforms on which they could stand and fly around. Hypersensitivity Due to being capable of perceiving subtle shifts and vibrations in the surrounding air currents, airbenders can detect approaching threats, which gives them a split-second increase in their reaction time, similar to how earthbenders use seismic sense. Because of this, air nomads traditionally shave their heads as to free themselves and have a stronger connection with the wind around them. Tenzin demonstrated this technique when he was able to detect and evade an ambush by the Equalists on the roof of City Hall during the Battle for Republic City. Daw also demonstrated it during a battle with bison rustlers when he perceived and evaded an attack behind him by sensing the oncoming threat. Flight The ability to fly was originally exclusive to the flying bison and air lion turtles. However, Guru Lahima was able to unlock the ability by releasing himself of all his earthly tethers, achieving true and complete freedom. This technique is so rare that he was the only airbender in history to have ever achieved it until Zaheer, 
a student of Lahima's teachings, also unlocked the ability 4,000 years later by letting go of his last earthly connection, namely his girlfriend Pali, following her death. Being able to fly without an aid, such as a glider, grants the practitioner more stability and freedom in the sky, while also permitting easier use of bending mid-flight. It is also an energy-efficient technique, as it allowed Lahima to live the last 40 years of his life without ever touching the ground. Although a powerful technique, the ability is hindered by additional weight and the currents of the wind. Assisted Flight or Gliding Although all airbenders can levitate or extend jumps via airbending, most if not all airbenders possess a glider for mid-range flight. These handcrafted portable wooden canvas structures can collapse into a staff for storage and as an aid when bending. In glider form, it is used in conjunction with bending to fly as long as the bender has the strength to maintain the air currents. With stronger winds, multiple people can be carried for short distances. As a normal staff, it can be used as a weapon in battle, to aid in bending, and even as a levitation aid when spun above the head like a helicopter propeller. By 174 AG, these glider staffs had been replaced by wingsuits. Ang used his glider for windsurfing, but later destroyed his damaged glider, though it was replaced at the beginning of the invasion of the Fire Nation by a more advanced version created by the machinist and his son Tio, which can also dispense snacks when the handle is twisted. When visiting Roku's pass during the summer solstice, Ang saw a younger version of his old mentor, Monk Gyatso, utilizing the glider as a makeshift board to surf on air. Spiritual Projection Master airbenders who have a strong connection with their spiritual side are capable of projecting their spirits into other locations. Through projection, an airbender is able to explore underground or sealed locations by passing through solid matter. Airbenders can also use this technique to find individuals with whom they have a strong bond. During Harmonic Convergence, Janora used an amplified version of this ability to assist Avatar Korra during her battle with the Dark Avatar. She used the technique once more to find where the Dai Li imprisoned airbenders in Ba Sing Se, and later again to try to find a way to escape the Red Lotus. Waterbending Waterbending is practiced by some people of the water tribe. A versatile element, it is unique in the sense that the original bender of the element was not an animal, but rather the moon. Similar to their element, waterbenders are extremely adaptable and versatile. Waterbending concentrates on the flow of energy, focusing less on strength and more on turning the opponent's own energy against them. While a bender's victory in battle depends on their skill or ingenuity, waterbenders gain a serious advantage or disadvantage depending on the amount of water around them. Although highly skilled waterbenders can draw water from anywhere, such as draw humidity from the air or bend water in living things, especially plants. As the element of change, waterbenders can fluidly and quickly alternate from defense to offense, from a wall of ice to a jet of water, turning their opponent's strength against them. Due to its lunar sympathy, waterbending is stronger at night and ineffective during a lunar eclipse or when the moon spirit dies. However, to counter waterbending's ineffectiveness during a lunar eclipse, waterbenders gain immense power during the peak of the full moon. The opposite of waterbending is firebending, with its relatively stagnant direct philosophy. During the era of Rava, the power of water was first granted by the water lion turtle, who would temporarily provide it as protection to those venturing into the spirit wilds. However, after the lion turtles renounced their role as protectors of mankind during the era of the Avatar, the turtles refused to give people the power anymore. The descendants of the people living atop the water lion turtle eventually learned to waterbend by observing how the moon pushed and pulled the tides of the ocean. They learned how to simulate the effect themselves. As such, they have a strong spiritual connection to the moon and its counterpart, the ocean. In fact, waterbending is the only bending art to originate from the spirits instead of animals, and additionally, any adverse effect on these spirits detrimentally affects waterbenders. Breath of Ice a waterbender can use the water vapor in their breath to rapidly freeze objects or opponents. For a more advanced version of the technique, the user takes a deep breath and exhales the air as a cloud of freezing mist. Katara used this technique to freeze Jet to a tree, to save Sokka from Hu, and to stop a warship from sinking by temporarily freezing a hole in the ship's hull. Avatar Aang also used this ability to break the chain when Boomy was being lifted by a crane. Ice Blade Waterbenders can create a sword-like blade of ice. 
Minghua used this technique to threaten a delivery truck driver in order to smuggle her and her companions out of Republic City, and again during her battle with Kaya at the Northern Air Temple in an attempt to skewer the other woman. Ice Bullets Waterbenders are able to rapidly shoot shards of ice at their opponents. Tarlock used this technique in his fight with Avatar Korra, while Desna and Eska used this against Minghua and Kaya used it against Zaheer. Ice Claws Shown by Hama, using ice claws involves the bender drawing water around their fingers and freezing it. They can also be sent forward, shooting them at an opponent. A waterbender can also use this as an advantage. Being small and unnoticeable, they can hide them in their sleeves just like May's weapons. Additionally, this technique uses little water and can thus be performed quickly using the condensation technique. Ice Column Similar to the earth column technique used by earthbenders, a waterbender can shoot a pillar of ice up from the ground to knock their opponent off their feet. Unalak used this technique during his duel with his brother Tonrock. Ice Creeper A waterbender can send a ray of ice on the ground, speeding at an opponent to freeze them. This technique freezes a trail of water beginning where the waterbender performed the move and ending where their target freezes. This technique was first performed by Katara when she accidentally froze Sokka's feet to the ship before she was able to freeze three Fire Nation soldiers. Kaya also used this technique in her fight with Zaheer. Ice Disc A waterbender can create a cylindrical column of ice and proceed to slice razor-sharp sections off of it and send them at an opponent. They are sharp around the edges but also thin, as Master Paku was able to break them with his wrists. Ice Gauntlet Similar in technique to the ice claws, a waterbender can freeze water around their hands and turn it into a sharp spike that can be used to scale mountains or impale their opponent. Tonrock made use of this in his battle with Zaheer on Lahima's Peak. Ice Hook Waterbenders, if creative enough, may form a hook out of ice which they can use to climb vertical surfaces. Minghua bent ice hooks to climb up the walls of Pali's prison while carrying her. She also used an ice hook to take out a white lotus sentry while breaking out of her prison. Ice Line Waterbenders can create lines of twisting ice columns to knock out their opponents. Unalak, while in the Dark Avatar state, used an advanced version of this technique to knock out Mako and Bolin during harmonic convergence. Ice Shield Waterbenders are able to freeze water in front of them, creating a shield of ice. Katara performed this technique on numerous occasions during the Hundred Year War, and Korra later made use of it to protect herself from a metal-bending police officer who chased after her during her first time in Republic City, as well as during her fight with the Dark Avatar. Kaya also employed this move to defend herself and her brother Bumi from rocks being launched by Gazan during their battle at the Northern Air Temple. Ice Spear the Ice Spear is a waterbending move that involves freezing a stream of water into a spike and firing it at the intended target. This move was used by Katara when she was about to strike down Yan-Ra, and Korra also used this technique when she faced Amon. Iceberg Spike Waterbenders can shoot small shards of ice at their opponent, or cause a giant spike to protrude from a body of water. The Northern Water Tribe employs these as a primary defense of their homeland when enemy ships are sighted. Desna and Eska performed numerous iceberg spikes during their duel with Minghua. Korra also employed this technique to slow down Kuvira's enormous mecha suit. Phase Change Waterbenders also possess the ability to alter the physical state of the water they manipulate, between solid, liquid, and gas, at will. Changing the phase of water allows for multiple techniques in the course of a battle, from encasing an opponent in ice to hiding behind a wall of mist. Ice and steam or fog can also be molded in a diverse range of shapes. Ice provides a degree of hard lethality since it can be molded into spikes or blades to pin down or impale opponents. Steam or mist can obscure a battlefield and mask movement. Katara made good use of this to enhance her performance as the Painted Lady. Waterbenders also possess the ability to breathe an icy mist that freezes water and other substances. Streaming the Water Named by Katara, this is a move that draws water from a source that waterbenders move around their bodies. A more advanced version demonstrated by Aang apparently involves sinking and floating. This move is thought to be used for basic training so that beginning waterbenders can get a feel for water, but in reality it is a useful move performed by waterbenders of every skill level. Water Bullet the water bullet is a move where a waterbender bends a large amount of water and sends it in a forceful blow toward their target. It is similar to a water jet, 
but it is more for quick use since the jet takes more concentration. It is basic yet useful because it takes little time to perform and has a significant effect on the target. Katara used this against Hama. Water Cloak A waterbender can use their water as a form of armor with tentacle-like arms. The bender can use these arms to grab objects or enemies, whip enemies, blast enemies with water, and freeze them. If a waterbender has less water available, he or she can simply form the arms instead of the entire cloak. This technique was first shown by Katara while she dueled against Azula in the Crystal Catacombs, and again when she was on board the Southern Raiders frigate. Korra used this against members of the Northern Water Tribe when breaking her father out of prison, and it was later used by both Korra and Unalak in their fight during Harmonic Convergence. Both Kaya and Tanrak also used it during their duels with Zaheer at Air Temple Island and Lahima's Peak. Minghua mastered this technique to the point that she could mold the ends of the tentacles into any shape, such as a claw or hook, as well as only locally freeze the ends while retaining the mobility of the tentacle as a whole. Water Filtering When working in concert with an earthbender, a waterbender can purify polluted water. The waterbender suspends the polluted water in the air while the earthbender removes the pollutants. Water Jet High pressure jets can be used to force opponents back or even blast clean through a target if focused enough. Water jets are primarily used if the user has the intent of severely hurting their opponents. It was seen being performed by Katara against a pirate. Water Knife the ability to shape water into a super sharp edge or point for a split second, enabling a waterbender to cut through metal, wood, and stone. Aang and Katara used this technique to sabotage the Fire Nation drill assaulting Ba Sing Se. Water Manipulation Almost all forms of waterbending involve moving and shaping a body of water to the waterbender's desire. By simply levitating a large mass of water, waterbenders can move water anywhere they wish, even parting it under the surface of a lake or sea, allowing them to walk along the bottom of a basin without the need to swim. These large bodies of water can also be used as weapons, either by shaping them into gigantic whips swung repeatedly at a target as a snake-like body, or momentarily into a razor-sharp edge that can cut through even metal, or simply dropped onto an opponent to smother them or put out a fire. On the sea or ocean, water bending can be used to create giant maelstroms. Ang and Katara used this to set off a giant sea serpent. Water Pressure Manipulation Waterbenders are also able to manipulate water pressure, allowing them to use water to grasp other objects or cut through without simply parting around them. Water can be used as a semi-solid while being able to move and flow like a liquid. Water can be pressurized to such a level where it can slice through metal. Waterbenders can also use this to avoid sinking in water, effectively allowing them to walk on water, as demonstrated by Katara multiple times. Water Wall or Water Shield Water can be molded into a variety of shapes and can be used to deflect an attack, trap opponents in a viscous body, reshaped and propelled at attackers before they can recover, or solidified into a shield of ice. This diversity and ability to swiftly change to suit the situation is what makes the waterbender's defense so adaptable. Although usually protective, the shield needs some kind of compression or else it will not be effective. This is demonstrated when Katara was fighting Zuko at the Spirit Oasis, and her quickly made shield could not block the fire blast. Water Whip The Water Whip is a commonly used move that involves creating a lashing tendril of water to swipe at an opponent. The shape, size, and length are all determined by a waterbender's control, and more powerful benders can create larger whips, or ones of greater finesse. The whip can be sharpened into a blade that can slice through metal with relative ease, and Katara, Korra, Tanrak, Desna, and Eska have demonstrated the ability to create water whips with their feet. Wave By moving a large mass of water without separating it from its original source, waterbenders can create waves of nearly any size. They do this using an upward movement that raises the source, which they subsequently send away in their desired direction. This can be used to sweep opponents away or even as a form of transport, with the bender surfing on the crest of the wave. This same process can be used to propel waterborne craft. Bubble. Capable waterbenders are able to cross large bodies of water by creating a bubble around themselves and their fellow travelers, maintaining a supply of air for their journey. This technique was first used by Aang and Katara to cross the Serpent's Pass, and later by Katara on two occasions so that she and Appa could submerge. 
It was also used by Cora several times to transport herself and others under the surface of Yue Bay while traveling to and from Air Temple Island. Ice Dome A highly advanced technique, as demonstrated by Katara while fighting against Zuko in the Spirit Oasis, a waterbender may surround a foe in a sphere of water and freeze it, trapping their opponent inside. Ice Drill By turning the tip into ice, waterbenders control massive amounts of water into a spiraled frozen drill. This technique was first demonstrated by Unalak while he tried to open the Northern Spirit Portal. Ming Hua used this to break Pali out of her cell. Ice Floor With a sufficient amount of water available, a master can cover a large area of the ground with ice, trapping their enemy's feet in ice while allowing them to slide around. This technique was used by Paku during the Order of the White Lotus Liberation of Ba Sing Se, and by Ana during a fight against an Earth Empire mecha suit. Tano used a variation of this technique to only momentarily freeze the floor locally in order to cause Bo Lin to slip during a pro-bending match. Ice Ladder This technique can be used for quick scaling of vertical surfaces when no other options are available. Katara created an ice ladder to rescue Hakoda and Earth King Kuei when the Bridge of No Return collapsed beneath them. Ice Prison This technique covers an opponent in a prison made of ice. By finally controlling the position of the person within, this technique can restrict the motion of an opponent's hands, thus rendering them powerless. Katara utilized this move to incapacitate Azula during Sozin's Comet. Tanrak used this technique to trap two northern soldiers before he was incapacitated himself in a similar manner by Unalak. Minghua also demonstrated mastery over this technique, as she used two ice pillars to imprison Desna and Eska. Ice Ramp Waterbenders can manipulate ice as a means of short transportation for themselves or others. Katara used this when training with Aang and Toph, as well as during the battle for Yudao. Korra used this technique to craft a pathway to topple a snowmobile in order to save Unalak, and later to transport herself during her fight with Hundan and his dark spirits. Tanrak also used this technique as a manner of quick transportation during his duel with Unalak. Similarly, Waterbenders can also shift snow and water to create stairs of ice in order to improve mobility in snow. Ice Sled An advanced version of the ice ramp, master waterbenders can craft a sled out of ice and propel it forward with their bending at speeds that rival those achieved by motorized transportation, such as snowmobiles. Ice Tunneling Waterbenders are able to swim through thick ice with the same ease as through water, allowing them to surprise their foes. This technique was only seen to have been performed twice, once by a waterbender from the Southern Water Tribe in a flashback of Hamas, and again by Korra, who used it to escape from her compound. Maelstrom In a large body of water, a waterbender can create a gigantic whirlpool. This technique was executed by Aang and Katara while fighting the serpent. Mist Stepping A variation of the dust stepping and fire stepping techniques used by earthbenders and firebenders a fast waterbender can use tiny pillars of ice to quickly scale a building. This technique was invented by the Flying Opera Company. Multiple Water Whips An advanced waterbending move similar to the single water whip, except it deals with more than one whip, usually four or five. This technique seems to be able to inflict a large amount of damage. It was used by Katara against Azula. Octopus Form a body of water formed around the user into multiple whip-like limbs which can be used to grasp or strike an opponent or to intercept incoming attacks. This technique was first demonstrated by Aang during his training with Katara, who later used the form herself while fighting the Dai Li. Ming Hua used a variation of this form in her duel with Kaya at the Northern Air Temple and against Mako prior to her death. Partial Ice Whip Waterbenders can take hold of the end of an opponent's water whip and locally freeze the opposite end in order to trap their opponent and pull them in closer. Korra demonstrated this technique in her fight against the Dark Avatar. Razor Rings An experienced waterbender can create multiple simultaneous water rings capable of cutting. Katara used this against the Swamp Monster and Tarlock used the technique against Avatar Korra. Water Ball Similar to the bubble technique and the ice prison technique, a waterbender can trap their opponent in a ball of water. Unalak used this technique to trap Rava and Minghua to imprison Bolin. Water Boxing To perform the technique, a waterbender surrounds their fist with a small amount of water and punches their opponent. This move was used by Tano in a match against the fire ferrets. 
water dome. A master waterbender can collect water from the rain, forming a dome that can be used for both offense and defense. Katara used this to frighten Yan Ra. Water drill. A high pressure rotating column of water capable of exerting a significant amount of pressure upon a solid surface that allows the action of a drill. This move takes mastery of water bending, since the motions to create a constantly twirling body of water requires bending skill. This technique was first demonstrated by Avatar Roku's water bending master, and later by Kaya during her fight with Zaheer. Water Gimbal Skilled waterbenders can create a gimbal, or two rotating rings of water, around their bodies. This has both defensive and offensive capabilities, such as being used as a cannon. Kaya used this technique during her fight with Zaheer on Air Temple Island. Water Pinwheel This move involves the user moving a large mass of water and spinning it vertically around themselves. This was demonstrated by Hama while blocking Katara's attacks. Water Ring A skilled waterbender can create a ring of water around their body, which can be used for both defense and offense, such as shooting ice shards or sending water whips at their opponent. Kaya used this in her duel with Zaheer and twice against Ming Hua. Water Sphere A master waterbender can create a water sphere to protect himself from the strikes of his opponents. Tarlock used this technique in his fight with Avatar Korra in the City Hall. Water Spout This high-level technique involves controlling a whirlpool-like pillar of water or snow, rotating it and directing its movements at the same time, making it easier for the user to dodge attacks. In accordance with the water spout's constantly shifting and coiling movements, it forms a giant snake of water around the lower body, elevating them from the surface of the water. First demonstrated by Aang, Paku used a snow variant of this technique to ward off several firebenders during the Siege of the North, and Katara performed a minor version of this to bring Aang up and out of the Crystal Catacombs. Korra, Aman, and Unalak also proved to be skilled practitioners of this technique. The water spout has a limited height, however, depending on the amount of water fueling it. Armless Waterbending Proficient waterbenders can control water without the use of limbs, relying only on the torso to generate enough movement to manipulate the medium. With this technique, waterbenders such as Minghua can create water-like appendages as makeshift arms and even turn the entire body into an ice drill by generating enough momentum. Ice Fissure Avatars are able to use waterbending to split frozen ground by bending the water mixed with the earth. Unalak used this technique after merging with Vatu to form a deep chasm and trap Korra within, intending to crush her as he brought both sides of the fissure back together. Remote Waterbending Avatars can use waterbending from distances, which a waterbender would not normally be able to access. While in combat with Ozai, Aang went into the Avatar state and pulled water in from the sea toward himself to make part of his elemental sphere. After defeating Ozai, Aang raised the tides of the sea to put out the fire at Wulong Forest caused by Ozai and his airships. Tsunami Since they can control larger amounts of water, avatars are capable of creating and controlling water bodies of far greater size and scale, including causing massive tsunamis at will. This technique was first demonstrated by Avatar Kurok as he created a large wave to ride on. Later, Aang and Princess Yue created a large tsunami that brought Aang to safety on Crescent Island. Korra used a variation of this technique to create a localized wave that spun the northern battleships out of the way to allow Varric's yacht to pass through their blockade. Water Compression An avatar in the avatar state has enough power over water to compress its volume, compacting several thousands of gallons into a small volume. Aang did so when he created his elemental sphere while preparing to pursue Ozai. Bloodbending Bloodbending is a rather sinister application of the principle that water is present in every living organism, thus making them bendable objects themselves. By definition, bloodbending is a technique that allows a bender to enforce his or her will to an organism. Initially, it was thought that bloodbending could only be done during the full moon, where waterbenders are at their most powerful. However, it was proven that complete mastery of bloodbending would not require a full moon to practice the ability, when Yakone and later his sons, Noatak and Tarlok, had employed the technique without the aid of the full moon. This technique was invented by Hama during her time as a Fire Nation prisoner following the Southern Water Tribe raids. She came to a realization that living things, animals and humans included, contain large volumes of water and thus can be bent. Later, 
the technique was outlawed following the Hundred Year War, with Katara leading the motion for it to be declared illegal. Healing Waterbenders can sometimes use a unique subskill, the ability to heal injuries by redirecting energy paths, or chi, throughout the body, using water as a catalyst. Waterbenders can use their abilities to heal by surrounding a sick or injured person with water, which glows during the process. When infused with spiritual knowledge, a variation of this technique can be used to calm angry spirits, as demonstrated by Unalak and Korra. The use of healing was generally taught to female waterbenders of the Northern Water Tribe, who were not allowed to study combative forms of waterbending prior to the end of the Hundred Year War. Katara is known to be the best healer in the world. With the help of Spirit Oasis water, she was able to heal Aang and resurrect him. Body Temperature Control Considered an extension of healing, certain powerful waterbenders are able to lower body temperature to such a level that all processes are slowed down, including death itself. Atua used this technique to heal the wounded guards of Chancellor Darren. Kiyoshi later learned the technique from Atuat and used it to freeze Yoon's heart and lungs during their final confrontation, causing his death. Cloud Manipulation By working together, a waterbender and airbender can easily manipulate clouds which are made of air and water to create various shapes. In one particular instance, cloud shaping was used to provide a message to nearby villagers of an erupting volcano. It was later used by Aang and his friends to disguise their flights on Appa while moving about the Fire Nation. Condensation Not only can skilled waterbenders condense clouds into a usable source of water when they are within close range of one, but they can also condense invisible water vapor right out of the air. Although, due to the limited quantities of water present in the air, as a mere 1% at most of the Earth's atmosphere is water vapor, the amount of water extracted from the air is quite minimal. Favorable environmental and climactic conditions increase the amount of water one can remove from the air. Plant Bending a member of the Foggy Swamp Tribe, who illustrated that talented waterbenders can manipulate plant life. Plant bending has enabled members of the swamp to control every form of plant life from the highly water-saturated vines and roots found within the swamplands to seaweed from the ocean floor. They can even rapidly compress and replace the plant mass of the plants they bend, since the cell tissues of a plant are more versatile than the cell tissues of an animal, also explaining why blood bending could originally only be achieved on the nights of the full moon all by bending the ample amount of water within them, just as they can with watery mud. Going further, a skilled waterbender is able to separate and completely extract the water from plants for more effective utilization, just as they are able to separate the water from mud, sand, and even polluted river systems. In the case of plants, this process will leave behind the withered remains of all the affected plant life, or even making them collapse in the case of large trees. The degree of skill in manipulating plant life depends on the experience of the bender, and whether or not a full moon is present. Katara and Hama extracted the water from large trees with relatively no difficulty during their battle under the full moon. Simpler and smaller forms of plant life, such as grass, flowers, and seaweed, can be bent with relative ease, with or without a full moon. Solutions It has been shown that waterbenders can manipulate any mass of liquid consisting of some water. For example, Katara bent the contents of the Abbey's perfume vials. She used water bending to stir and ladle stew into bowls, to spill ink out of a bowl, and to bend the water inside mud as well. Katara halted the flow of the slurry on the back of the drill to prevent Tai Lee from following her, and with Toph's aid, they were able to push the slurry back into the drill. Katara was seen bending mud when she and Toph ended up fighting when they were supposed to be training Aang, and she bent soup right into Appa's mouth from a pot. Katara bent ink to make a Fire Nation official leave the room so that she and Zuko could search through the files about the current location of the Southern Raiders. Aang thought of using glue bending to defeat Ozai, suggesting that a waterbender could bend glue. Spirit Bending A variation of the healing technique with the addition of spiritual knowledge. By encircling spirits or even projected human souls in the spirit world with water, one is able to induce a change between the positive and negative energies, creating balance or imbalance within the target. Steam Manipulation A technique that allows waterbenders to manipulate steam and can also be used to manipulate fog. It can be used to freeze people or objects or to create cover. Katara made good use of the technique when she created a thick cloud of steam to conceal a ship from the enemy and when she surrounded herself in a fog to create an eerie atmosphere while pretending to be a river spirit. Korra also made use of this technique while infiltrating Amon's rally 
using steam from nearby pipes to provide cover for Mako. Water Run This is a technique in which waterbenders run on water at high speeds, in addition to riding on foreign objects with the same purpose. This technique was first used during Team Avatar's crossing of the Serpent's Pass, when Katara formed an ice surfboard and increased her speed in order to effectively freeze the Serpent's midsection without being hit. She used it a second time to cross the lake to Zhang Hui. Aang used this in his fight against Ozai to flee from Ozai's attacks after being knocked off a cliff. During their fight with Korra, Desna and Eska encased their feet with ice to allow them to slide across the water. Korra also used this technique to ride a wave and cross the water when she was trying to stop two thieves in a small fishing town. Earthbending Earthbending originates in the Earth Kingdom, and the first earthbenders were badger moles. It demands a special connection with the Earth that is achievable with neutral Jing, listening, though seemingly doing nothing, and waiting for the right moment to strike. Like waterbenders, earthbenders gain an advantage or disadvantage in battle based on the amount of Earth around them, though the conditions are not as extreme. Because of their element's stability and its stress on neutral Jing, earthbenders stand their ground, absorbing or intercepting attacks until they completely overwhelm their opponents. Unlike the other bending arts, earthbending's strength equally lies in both offense and defense. Earthbending is in stark contrast to airbending, as airbending's emphasis is on evasion and mobility, while earthbending's emphasis is on fortitude and strength. During the era of Rava, the power of earth was temporarily bestowed on the inhabitants of a city atop a giant lion turtle while they left the village to hunt for food. After the inhabitants permanently left the care of the lion turtle, humans first learned to earthbend by observing and imitating the geokinetic abilities of badger moles living in the mountains in what is now the Earth Kingdom territory. According to legend, known widely as the legend of the two lovers, two star-crossed lovers named Oma and Shu, who hailed from separate warring villages, were the first people who learned the art from these creatures so that they could meet within the mountain that divided them. To make sure no one could ever find them, they used their new abilities to create a labyrinth of tunnels inside the mountain, which only they could navigate. One day, after many meetings in the series of passageways, the man did not come to see his lover, as he had died, a casualty of the village's quarrel. His lover showcased a devastating display of her earthbending abilities and ultimately proclaimed the feud over. The villages subsequently collaborated to construct a city, Omashu, in their honor. The pathways they made by earthbending became known as the Cave of Two Lovers. Earth and Stone Levitation The most common attack involves levitating nearby pieces of earth and stone of numerous sizes. More powerful benders can move larger masses, and propelling them at foes with punches or kicks. Earth Block Earthbenders can bring up blocks of earth and launch them at their enemies. The Dai Li use this technique against Team Avatar during the Day of Black Sun. Earth Column A more powerful version of rock projectiles, this technique involves forcing columns of rock out of the ground. Using a similar principle, an earthbender can shoot a stream of small ruts and protrusions from underground at their opponent. This can also be used to enhance the bender's jumps. It is, however, limited to the ground and does not have the same range as a rock projectile. Earth Compression it is possible for earthbenders to compress large chunks of rocks into smaller, denser chunks, or to compress several smaller chunks into one big piece of rock. Haru and his father Tyro used this technique compressing several small pieces of coal into one big coal boulder. The fact that two earthbenders were required to perform it suggests that this technique is quite difficult. Earth Gauntlet A much less advanced version of earth armor that can be used to throw back opponents with a hard, solid force. Aang used this technique when fighting against Azula on the drill. The technique is useful in that it grants some level of protection of earth armor, but allows the rest of the body to remain flexible. Earth Hand, or Mannequin An earthbender with a decent grasp of sculpting can craft replicas of human appendages or bodies from any rock source and move them from place to place. While playing King of the Hill, Toph made a large hand to grab and toss Aang to the side. When Toph was pretending to be Fire Lord Ozai as part of a training exercise, she used this technique to simulate the Fire Lord's bodyguards. Earth Launch While earthbenders like being rooted to the ground, with some like Toph being unable to see in the air, they can quickly move rock beneath them and launch them several tens of feet into the air. 
whether to catch airborne opponents or to travel faster. Toff and Bumi did this during the Battle of Wulong Forest and the liberation of Ba Sing Se, respectively. Bolin is shown to be able to launch himself into the air with earthbending, as was seen when he escaped the Earth Queen's palace. Earth Material Manipulation Earthbending is not limited to rock or soil alone. An earthbender can also manipulate coal, gems, crystals, and other earth-based materials like meteorites and genomite. Earth Shelter This can be used by earthbenders to create a shelter or dome, which can provide instant shelter in the wilderness. Toph often created shelters like these to sleep in while Team Avatar was traveling, and used it to create a safe place where Ying could give birth. It can also be used to trap enemies, but this application would not work against an earthbending opponent who would be able to cancel out the technique. These can also be created in combat as a defense against non-earthbending attacks. Earth Sinking More advanced earthbenders, such as the Boulder, Master Yu, and General Fong, can forcibly sink their opponents into the ground, imprisoning them or even suffocating them in earth. This technique was used by General Fong to subdue Katara. Jianju was particularly versed in this technique, being able to commit mass burials, earning the moniker of Grave Digger. Earth Smash Earthbenders can easily destroy rocks and boulders with punches and kicks, even if they have a small amount of muscle mass. This technique is useful when facing other earthbenders, as it allows the earthbender to destroy any earthen projectiles sent at them and break out of imprisoning techniques. However, it does not seem to affect objects not made of earth. Earth Wall Earthbenders can create walls of earth, which can be used for both defense and offense, as well as for practical things like construction. Earthquakes and Fissures Striking the ground with feet, fists, or hammers, as shown by Gao, creates localized earthquakes or fissures to throw opponents off balance. This same process can be used to sculpt a landmass or to slice large chunks of rock clean off a surface to create avalanches or rockfalls. More advanced earthbenders can make narrow fissures for precise attacks. Ground Shift Earthbenders can alter the ground beneath others to move them out of their way. The sudden movement can be disorienting to the target. Quicksand Earthbenders turn certain surfaces to quicksand to immobilize an enemy or to create a soft landing for themselves should they fall from a height. Sandbenders can also do the reverse of this, compacting sand together to create harder projectiles or a firmer grip on the ground. Rock Cuff Earthbenders can quickly fashion cuffs out of rock to immobilize their opponents. Rock Hanging If an earthbender is attached to, or wearing, a piece of rock, he or she can attach to other stone surfaces and remain off the ground for long periods of time. The Dai Li are the only ones that have demonstrated this ability through the use of their earth gloves, giving them the ability to cling onto a rocky surface. Rock Shield a levitated slab of rock can also double as a shield when positioned in front of a bender. This can also be performed with a slab or sheet of bedrock thrust out of the earth's surface. The shield can be hurled at the opponent for quick retaliation. Rock Slide If an earthbender is near a cliff or mountain, he or she can cause many rocks of a multitude of sizes to rain down on his or her opponent. The canyon guide demonstrated that it would be possible to redirect the path of a rock slide. This was shown when he protected his refugee customers from getting crushed. Sand Spout Similar to both the water and the air spout, an earthbender can manipulate fine sand particles to form a whirling column. The sandbenders use this technique to propel their sand sailors through the Siwong Desert. Slab Shackles With proper timing, an earthbender can bind an opponent's arms with triangle-shaped slabs. This technique is generally used if the opponent is in a vulnerable position for example, on their knees. This technique was first used by Aang against Ozai to keep him in place while Aang took his bending away. It was later used by Aang to detain Yakone when he removed his bending. Water filtering. When working in concert with a waterbender, an earthbender can purify polluted water. The waterbender suspends the polluted water in the air while the earthbender removes the pollutants. Dust cloud. By shaking the ground back and forth, Earthbenders can create dust clouds of various sizes to provide cover, the particles of which can also be manipulated themselves. Dust Stepping A variation of the mist-stepping and fire-stepping techniques used by waterbenders and firebenders, by creating very thin pillars of increasing size, 
a fast earthbender can use this technique to quickly scale walls. It was invented by the Flying Opera Company, where it was used specifically by Lek, who later brought the technique to Avatar Kyoshi. Earth Armor Earthbenders can bring rocks, dust, pebbles, or crystals around them and mold them to fit their body and create something similar to armor. They can also hide inside the earth by bending the rock around them as a shell. Later, it is demonstrated by Toph that metal can be used as an armor as well. The earth armor was used by Toph in a training exercise with Aang. Aang later uses this technique with crystals against Azula, and again with rocks against Combustion Man, and finally Ozai. This earthbending move is great for defense, especially against fire. It is not as effective for offensive moves since it limits the practitioner's range of motion. Earth Bomb By sending a rock toward the ground, earthbenders can cause massive damage as well as throw their opponents off their feet. Aang used it against Zuko, almost gaining the upper hand of the battle before the Dai Li intervened. Earth Tunneling Earthbenders can move through the earth to outmaneuver their foes either by opening tunnels or by pulling the earth past them, literally swimming through the ground. Earth Wave High-level earthbenders can create a wave of earth to ride on and use it as a form of transportation, as Aang and Toph have both done, as well as Roku and Sud while training. The downsides of the wave are that it takes a lot of energy to produce, as well as intense concentration. The slightest distraction could cause the user to lose control of the wave. They can also force a wave of earth outward and use it as an extremely powerful offensive attack, as both Aang and General Fong were seen doing during their battle. Earth Riding Earthbenders can manipulate pebbles to spell out messages for others to read. The false avatar Yun was particularly skilled at this technique, able to form such messages while a considerable distance away from the earth he was bending. Magnetization Skilled earthbenders are capable of magnetizing their limbs to any type of stone, making wall scaling simpler in the appropriate circumstances. The Dai Li agents could perform this move with ease and even stay upside down, such as when Team Avatar broke into the organization's secret headquarters in Lake Laogai. Remote Earthbending If an earthbender is suspended from the ground but is aware that there is earth somewhere near, the earthbender can focus his energies and bend that earth out of his physical reach out of sheer concentration. This was shown in a flashback when Bumi told Team Avatar how he freed himself during the eclipse. Bumi managed to summon some roof tiles and pieces of walls to rip open the front of his metal coffin. Aang also uses this technique to summon rocks for his elemental sphere while in the Avatar state. Compressed Rock Bullets Used solely by Aang in his fight with Phoenix King Ozai, Aang disintegrated one of his compressed rocks from his elemental sphere and shot its shrapnel-like fragments with great speed in a machine gun-like fashion. Due to the speed and density of these rocks, they did great damage to the landscape. It is similar to the rock gloves technique used by the Dai Li. Dust Devil Avatars can raise themselves high above ground level through dust devils, similar to air and water spouts. Enhanced Earth Armor By harnessing the power of the avatar state, avatars can surround themselves with large pieces of earth which they can subsequently conglomerate into a giant anthropomorphic rock body to use in combat. Avatar Aang used this technique to battle General Old Iron. Enhanced Earth Levitation With their greater power and stronger connection to the Earth, the Avatar can move hill-sized statues at will. Utilizing the power of the Avatar state, Kyoshi moved large statues of badger moles, and Aang moved various Earth pillars in his fight against Ozai, both for offense and defense. Korra also used this technique in her fight with Zaheer and later Kuvira, trying to crush her opponent with a hill-sized boulder. Powered Compression This is a much more powerful version of the Earth Compression technique, performed only by Aang while in the Avatar state. Instead of bending large chunks of Earth into a single projectile, Aang gathered boulder-sized rocks and simultaneously compressed each fragment into smaller, denser, and harder rocks essentially keeping the rocks under pressure for more volatile attacks if needed. Lastly, the rocks are directed to orbit the bender until they are used. Tectonics The Avatar can earthbend in a scale vast enough to move entire land masses, as shown by Avatar Kyoshi when she separated Kyoshi Island from the mainland. Aang later performed the same technique to separate the town of Yudao from its surrounding land. Directional Geomancy 
a ritual used by earthbending masters in order to identify an avatar that has been born in the Earth Kingdom. This technique involves setting various trigrams of bones across the Earth Kingdom, and in turn eliminating each region of the Earth Kingdom until the Earth Avatar can be located. After Avatar Karuk died, many prominent earthbending masters, such as Jian Zhu, Liu Beifang, Ne Liao the Gardener, and King Buro of Omashu, attempted to use this technique to find the Avatar but failed. This led to Avatar Kyoshi not being discovered until she was much older, and another individual, Yun, being falsely identified as the Avatar. Glass Bending Some earthbenders are able to control glass due to its mineral origin. Avatar Kyoshi was capable of this technique, such as when she bent shards of glass out of her skin following her confrontation with the Triad of the Golden Wing. Lava Bending Certain powerful earthbenders are able to change the phase of the earth they are manipulating, melting it into lava for more versatility in battle, similar to what waterbenders do with ice. A bender using this ability can form the lava into different weapons, or summon magma from the ground. The earliest known bender to perform this technique was Setso, the avatar that preceded Yang Chen. Gazan and Bolin are the only known non-avatar earthbenders to have demonstrated this technique. Liquefying Earth Similar to lava bending, highly skilled earthbenders can change the earth and stone into a liquid state without the use of heat. The only known earthbender capable of this technique is Yun, who liquefied the stone floor of the Avatar Mansion before solidifying it again to trap Kyoshi. He used it as well to liquefy the very foundations of the mansion and destroy it. Metal Bending Metal bending is a subskill of earthbending developed by Toph. Most earthbenders are unable to affect process metals. Usually, the trace amount of earth still present in the metal is so minuscule that it goes undetected even by the best earthbenders, lending to its use in detaining earthbenders. However, due to her ability to see earth, Toph was able to locate the small fragments of earth in metal, target them, and utilize them to bend the metal portion. In the beginning, she was not able to bend metal with the same ability or ease seen in normal earthbending. Eventually, her skill with metal bending developed to the point where she could effectively defeat comet enhanced firebenders during the battle at Wulong Forest with the technique. After the conclusion of the Hundred Year War, Toph founded a metal bending academy to teach the newly acquired skill to other earthbenders, and the technique eventually became the primary weapon of the metal bending police force in Republic City. As metal bending techniques were further refined, benders eventually learned how to manipulate metal without being in close contact with it and amateur metal bending students were able to apply this skill to small objects such as coins and canes. Mud Bending It has been demonstrated that earthbenders, like waterbenders, are able to bend mud due to the presence of earth within. Toph, aided by Katara, was able to push the slurry from the rear of the Fire Nation drill back into the machine, and the technique was also used by the two girls when they ended up fighting while they were training Aang. Toph also used this ability while training Korra in the swamp. Paint Bending Skillful earthbenders are able to bend earth-based pigments, even those that have been dried for very long periods of time. Yun made use of this technique when he bent the paint on the portraits of the fire avatars in the Fire Nation Royal Palace's Royal Gallery, and bent sharp pellets of paint at Chancellor Durin, his men, and Kyoshi, killing some and wounding many. Rock Gloves The Dai Li have mastered the rock glove technique, similar to an earth gauntlet, they cover their hands in small rocks and project them at a target as a small projectile or compacted fists to bludgeon an opponent. A more refined and favored method, however, is to use them as detachable hands, maintaining the hand shape and literally grabbing and restraining the opponent from a distance. Rock Shoes The Dai Li also used shoes made out of earth to slide to travel faster and to cling to walls and suspend themselves on the ceiling as Long Feng and the Dai Li used in Lake Lao Gai during their fight with Team Avatar and the reformed Freedom Fighters. Sand Bending Sand bending is an alternate earthbending style that has been adapted for use in the Siwang Desert by the people that live there. They move quickly in the desert on specialized wooden sailors that are propelled by bending miniature localized sandstorms behind their sails. Because sand is sediment which travels in flows, their style resembles air and water bending more than earthbending. It is implied that most, if not all, earthbenders are capable of easily bending sand, but because of the loose shifty nature of sand, it is not an easy transition for the average earthbender. 
The sandbenders of the desert are especially proficient with it due to their particular habitat. After the events at the Siwang Desert, Toph practiced her sandbending, achieving a mastery over it that allowed her to create an extremely detailed miniature sand version of Ba Sing Se. Likewise, one can compact the sand to be solid and thick. Sandbenders use this technique while stealing appa. Seismic Sense A technique originally developed by the blind badger moles, skilled earthbenders are able to sense vibrations through the ground, seeing by sensing their surroundings and making a mental image of it. It allows for a 360-degree field of vision outside of normal line of sight. To operate, the user needs direct contact with the ground, preferably without something like shoes in between. The technique is only usable on surfaces that the user can bend. Being blind, Toph constantly used this technique to navigate the world. She described it as kind of like seeing with her feet. During his training with Toph, Aang also developed this ability. Aang used this during a three-way training spar with Toph and Katara, and again during his fight against Ozai. Due to Toph's extensive use of the technique, she discovered other applications of it. Her seismic sense was so acute that she was capable of sensing even ants moving about, could identify people by the way they walked, and could almost always tell if someone was lying by sensing his or her physical reactions, such as breathing and heart rate. It was also the basis of her unique ability of metal bending. Toph also passed this technique to her daughters, Lin and Su Yin. Fire bending. Fire bending is used by the people of the Fire Nation and is the most aggressive bending art. Dragons were the first firebenders. They subsequently taught the Sun Warriors. For a long time, disciples of firebending were taught to be fueled by hatred as opposed to the original source. As the element of power, firebenders have to be able to maintain a constant source of energy and balance it in battle, unleashing a volley of direct, successive attacks. Unlike other benders who depend on external sources of their elements to bend, firebenders can create fire using their internal heat source in addition to controlling already existent flames. Skilled firebenders are able to fly using powerful jets of flames. Due to its solar affinity, firebending is stronger during the day and at its full power at noon, but completely ineffective during a solar eclipse. When a comet passes close to the planet, the power of a firebender is greatly increased. Firebending's relatively simple and direct style contrasts with the changing style of waterbending. A notable feature of special firebenders is the ability to create a hotter, blue fire. Azula was the only known firebender who demonstrated this extra-powerful flame. During the era of Rava, people received the element of fire from the fire lion turtle that was the guardian of their city, who would grant them the power with energy bending. They could request it whenever they ventured into the spirit wilds and were to return it when they came back. However, Juan stole the power to better his life and that of his impoverished friends, but was captured and banished. He was allowed to keep the power of fire to protect himself and eventually befriended the spirits. As such, he managed to hone his skills by learning the proper way of bending from the dragons that lived in the spirit wilds. He developed his style in such a manner that his fire became an extension of his body, rather than a mere tool for protection as the others perceived it. Others learned of his survival and also set out into the spirit wilds with the power of fire, no longer wanting to live under the poor conditions they had in the city. In the years following, people learned firebending from the dragons that had once populated the land. The first people in the era of the Avatar to learn from the dragons were the Sun Warriors, who understood the connection between the fire of their souls, the fire of the dragons, and the sun. In the remains of their once great civilization, Zuko and Aang discovered that firebending represents energy and life, a concept that had been lost to nearly all firebenders in the Hundred Year War. The true meaning of firebending was forgotten, as anger, rage, and a desire to dominate began to replace the ideals of life and energy and how they connect to the sun. The royal family encouraged this to aid in the propaganda that could be used as a tool to destroy and that the Hundred Year War was justified. Firebenders draw their power from the sun and other solar objects, such as comets, as well as the fiery core of the planet. A solar eclipse has the potential to completely negate a firebender's power, which is the result of a direct connection between the sun and firebending. Additionally, after defeating Katara at sunrise during the Siege of the North, Zuko stated that she rose with the moon, but he rose with the sun, further referencing the sun's importance to firebending. Firebenders are also said to draw power from volcanic energy and lightning. Blazing Rings and Arcs 
Spinning kicks or sweeping arm movements create rings and arcs to slow larger, more widely spread, or evasive targets. Zuko used a circular motion with his feet to create an expanding ring and successfully knocked Azula down during their comet-enhanced Agni Kai. Blocking Fire A skilled firebender can diffuse and extinguish an oncoming fire blast from another firebender by using a swift kick, jab, or any other defensive maneuver, allowing them to stop attacks. Fire Blade A more advanced version of a blazing arc. By narrowing and condensing their flame projections, firebenders can create thin blades of fire to slice through objects without completely destroying them. Azula used this technique to cut open a wall, and Zuko used it to free Azula from Katara's water whips. Firebomb Used as a short-range attack, a firebender can create a flame at the end of a limb and thrust the flame down in an explosive burst. Zuko used this technique once, and both Zuko and Aang performed it at the beginning of their routine on Ember Island. Enhanced by the power of Sozin's Comet, Phoenix King Ozai used an extremely powerful variant of a firebomb to break through Aang's Earth Shield. Fire Circle A technique demonstrated by the Sun Warriors. They created a circle of fire and suspended it in the air for an extended period of time. The tribesmen made these circles with the Eternal Flame just before Zuko and Aang were to be judged by Ran and Shaw. Fire Daggers Blowtorch-like jets which are created from the fist or fingertips to use as close-range melee attacks. However, they lack the ability to actually block physical objects. Both Zuko and Azula have used this technique, the latter to hold Quay hostage during the coup of Ba Sing Se. Korra used a variant of this technique, creating a blowtorch as opposed to a dagger to cut through the chains that were binding Tenzin and his family during the Equalist Victory Rally. Mako used this technique to threaten Two-Toed Ping for information regarding the theft of Future Industries' entire stockpile of technology. Korra also used this technique when getting ready to fight Macau and Lily at the Misty Palms Inn. Fire Streams A basic firebending ability, firebenders can shoot continuous streams of fire from their fingertips, fists, palms, or legs. These streams can be widened to create flamethrower-like techniques. Fire Nation soldiers often use this technique to damage or destroy villages and towns. Fire Whip An extension of a fire stream, this continuous stream of flame has a semi-tactile quality and can be utilized as a whip. The prison guards at the Boiling Rock use this technique to round up the prisoners during a lockdown, and a trainer of a Fire Nation circus employed it to intimidate Appa. Zuko used a larger version of the fire whip in his fight in Ba Sing Se, creating streams of great length for continuous mid to long range combat, which he used to counter Katara's water whip technique. Fire Lashes An even further extension of the fire whip and stream, firebenders can create a long lash of fire and bring it down on their enemies, like Azula did to Aang, or create smaller, multiple lashes and envelope an area with fire, like Zuko did. Jet Propulsion Skilled firebending masters are able to conjure high amounts of flame to propel themselves at high speeds on the ground or through the air. Normally, this can only be used for short periods of time by regular firebenders. However, when augmented by Sozin's Comet or the Avatar State, the technique can be used for sustained levitation and flight. It was first demonstrated by Azula during her battle with Aang in the Crystal Catacombs. During the fight, Azula released the flames she used to propel herself horizontally, which blasted Aang backward. Azula used this skill to propel herself through the air over the boiling lake as she was pursuing Zuko, Sokka, and Suki when they were escaping the prison. When Azula was knocked off an airship, she used a smaller burst of fire to propel herself onto a cliff, saving herself from falling to her death. During Sozin's Comet, Ozai and Jiang Jiang were capable of utilizing this skill with much more proficiency than Azula had ever shown. Azula and Zuko both executed this technique while powered by the comet during their Agni Kai, and Phoenix King Ozai used it extensively during the battle at the Wulong Forest with Aang. It was also used by General Iroh of the United Forces as he flew through the air above Republic City while defending against Equalist planes. This technique can also be used to briefly run across a vertical surface, as Mako and Korra did during an Equalist rally. Korra also used it to propel herself through the air during her fight with Zaheer. Jet Stepping A more precise form of jet propulsion and variation of the dust-stepping and mist-stepping techniques used by earthbenders and waterbenders. 
By using small bursts of flames beneath their feet, a firebender can quickly scale buildings. This technique was created by Ranji after she observed Lek using dust stepping. Fireballs and Fire Jabs Another basic ability, jabs and punches produce miniature fireballs and missiles of flame. These can be charged up to create larger, slower bursts, or swiftly and repetitively fired to keep opponents off balance. Flame Redirection In a similar fashion to water bending, firebenders are capable of changing the course of an incoming fire blast and redirecting it back at the attacker using fluid motion. This move exemplifies the use of firebending as an extension of the body and is used infrequently in modern combat in favor of more offensive maneuvers. Juan used this to defend spirits from firebending hunters. Shield of Fire This technique creates a protective shield of fire in front of or around a firebender that can deflect attacks and explosions. It may be a lesser version of the Wall of Flames. The Dancing Dragon This firebending form was learned from the sacred statues that were hidden atop the ancient civilization of the Sun Warriors. It involves a more fluid and natural form of firebending. It is a simple, yet possibly very powerful firebending form, as it also brings advantages for more skilled firebenders. Upon integrating it into his own style, Zuko's abilities improved to the point that he was able to duel evenly with Azula, successfully dispelling her attacks instead of overcoming them or trying to endure them. It is also one of the few firebending techniques with defensive capabilities. There is a circular nature to the technique, which is unusual in firebending. The only other known techniques to incorporate smooth circular movements are the fire circle and lightning generation. Charged Attacks Certain firebenders have been shown charging their attacks before releasing them, allowing them to create enormous blasts of fire. Zuko and Iroh used a combined charged attack against Aang prior to their first encounter. Zhao may have charged some of his attacks before releasing them when he fought Aang. Azula used this skill against Aang when they were battling atop the drill. During the battle in the Crystal Catacombs, Zuko used this technique against both Aang and Katara, and Iroh used a charged fire blast to defend himself against several Dai Li agents. During the battle at Wulong Forest, using comet-enhanced firebending, Phoenix King Ozai and several Imperial firebenders unleashed charged fire blasts of enormous size from airships in an attempt to carry out their Scorched Earth plan, and Ozai later used it again to break Aang's rock sphere during their battle. Iroh used a charged attack to destroy Ba Sing Se's thick inner wall during the liberation of the city. Fire Augmentation Firebenders can also control the size and intensity of any nearby flames and can draw them in to manipulate them at will. Zuko was the first one to show mastery over this technique, when he augmented the flame of the candles before him when his uncle brought him bad news. Avatar Roku used this method to protect himself and counter an attack by Zhao and his soldiers while Aang channeled his spirit. Zhang Zhang augmented the fire in his candles when he was discouraging Aang. When Azula scared Chan, the torch behind Azula also fell under her firebending as it burned bright blue. Zuko later augmented a campfire while confronting his anger. Another example is the fire in the Fire Lord's throne room. When Ozai and Azulan got angry, the flames rose up higher and burned more rapidly. It was also evident when Azula was on the throne and the flames around her turned a dark blue. Another example was when Zuko was attacking Aang in the beach house as he disintegrated the flames Aang used to counterattack. Fire Comet An advanced form of the fire stream in which the user pressurizes the fire into a ball and shoots it toward the enemy. Iroh employed this technique to break through the inner wall during the liberation of Ba Sing Se. Fire Missiles A more advanced form of the fire stream, powerful firebenders can shoot long streams of fire that follow the target as they move. This technique was used by both Ozai and Aang during the battle at Wulong Forest. Fire Pinwheel a whirling disk of flame capable of being used at long range. Only Azula appeared to have the ability to create these while in pursuit of Aang and Omashu. Intertwined Fire Stream An advanced move based on the basic fire stream, the performer directs two powerful fire streams at their opponent, though by intertwining the two streams, a massive comet-shaped fire stream is formed that has more power than the single stream. Zuko used this technique in the Crystal Catacombs and later again in his Agni Kai with Azula. Wall of Flames One of Firebending's few defensive techniques, 
either as a situated explosion or a controlled inferno, this wall of concentrated flames acts as a barrier to incoming attacks. It may be a more powerful version of a fire shield. It not only protects against attacks, but when used correctly, can be used to stealthily escape from foes. Azula once used it to deflect four simultaneous attacks from all four elements to provide herself a stealthy escape. Zuko used it to stop a combustion attack, although he was still being pushed back by the force of it. Master Zhang Zhang also used this method to stop a group of Fire Navy patrol boats. So precise was his control that his flames burned on water. He later created another wall to shield himself from four firebending attacks and escape from Zhao. Later on, Zhang Zhang used the technique to push back several Fire Nation tanks, which shows that it can also be used as an offensive move. It should be noted that in that instance, his firebending was being powered by Sozin's Comet. Pressurized Fire Stream A more powerful form of the fire stream, achieved by pressurizing the fire before it is released. It covers more area than a regular fire stream. Phoenix King Ozai and the Imperial Firebenders used this during their assault on Wulong Forest. Long Range Multiple Fire Whips an Avatar-level firebender can produce fire whips, the most being five at once. They are capable of reaching across long distances, displayed when Aang used this technique hundreds of feet above Ozai. This may have been a result of his firebending being augmented by Sozin's comet, or because he was in the Avatar state at the time, or possibly a combination of both. Each fire whip is also very wide and moves in a similar fashion to squid or octopus tentacles. They have enough destructive power to demolish large rock formations. This could be the technique Xiu was referring to when he said that only a fully realized avatar can open the sanctuary doors alone. Blue Fire Only Azula has demonstrated the ability to bend completely blue flames, which are hotter than the orange flames produced by most other firebenders. The production of blue fire is attributed to prodigious skill in firebending. Breath of Fire a special technique that allows the user to warm their body with firebending and breathing control, similar to an airbender's heat regulation ability. Although this technique has limits, as it could not entirely protect Zuko from the freezing cold of the far north pole, it is shown to be effective against other cold environments, such as the coolers of the boiling rock. Combustion Bending Combustion bending is an ability employed by Combustion Man and Pali, which allows the bender to ignite objects with their mind instead of traditional firebending methods. Combustion benders concentrate the energy through a tattooed third eye to project a ray of heat which detonates with great force, producing situated explosions with a great deal of precision. This technique is extremely effective and very destructive. Capable of use at close and long range, it can completely disintegrate hill-sized boulders and instantaneously evaporate large bodies of water with ease. It can also be employed to burn things without setting an explosion, similar to a lens focusing sunlight. The beam can also be curved as demonstrated by Pali. However, the technique has the potential to be just as hazardous to the user as it can be to their surroundings, as Combustion Man blew off his own right arm and leg due to his initial lack of control over the newly discovered ability in his youth. The sole known weakness of the combustion ray is that it is heavily reliant on an uninterrupted flow of chi, as blocking the chi paths in the forehead from where the combustion beam issues forth causes potentially fatal backfires. Dragon Fire When the dragons, Ran and Shaw, unleashed a vortex of fire, several other colors of fire beyond the usual yellow, orange, and blue flames were present, including white, purple, green, pink, and red fire. While defending his family during an ambush, Zuko also showed himself capable of creating a fire vortex with hints of green and purple flames. Energy Reading Similar to healing, firebenders are capable of using fire to sense chi paths and interpret spiritual energy. A Bhante shaman used this technique to ascertain the cause of Avatar Korra's memory loss, concluding it to be the result of a dark spirit infecting her. Nia Haitha was also familiar with this technique and used it to partially repair the spiritual damage done to Avatar Karuk. Fire Breathing Fire breathing involves the user firebending out of his or her mouth mixing air from the lungs with the flame, creating a wider, hotter blast. This has been exhibited by multiple individuals, including Ozai, Iroh, Zuko, Azula, Aang, Mako, and Korra. 
It was the employment of this firebending style in the heat of battle that earned General Iroh the nickname, the Dragon of the West. With its wide, encompassing range, the technique allows for staving off multiple opponents. It is also useful for stealth, as it requires no hand motions and can thus be impossible to predict. T can also serve as a catalyst for this technique, as shown by Iro. Heat Control Certain advanced firebenders appear to have the ability to control heat. Using this technique, firebenders can heat liquids, heat metal until it glows red, or melt ice, or in reverse, cool things down, as evidenced by Fire Lord Sozin, who absorbed the heat coming from lava through one hand, letting it pass through him and out via the other, effectively cooling it down. Lightning Generation Lightning generation is the ability to generate and direct lightning. It requires peace of mind and a complete absence of emotion. So far, only seven named firebenders have demonstrated themselves as capable of this art. Shu Ping An, Iroh, Ozai, Azula, Mako, Lightning Bolt Zolt, and Zuko's grandson, General Iroh. During Korra's lifetime, many other firebenders demonstrated the ability to generate lightning, particularly in creating energy for Republic City's power plant. Lightning Redirection After observing the redirecting techniques of waterbending, Iroh developed a technique to redirect the course of lightning strikes by absorbing it through one arm, guiding it through the stomach, and out the other arm. Only Iroh, Zuko, Aang, Azula, and Mako have demonstrated this ability to redirect lightning. Lightning Bolt Zolt is also known to have been capable of redirecting lightning. Energy Bending Energy bending is the art of bending the energy within one's body. It existed in the era of Rava, though it was considered a lost art over time. Few avatars have learned this bending art, and even fewer have used it. It is a highly dangerous technique. If one's own energy is impure and therefore bendable, the practitioner will consequently be destroyed. Energy bending allows the user to remove other people's bending abilities, restore them after a bender has had their abilities blocked by blood bending, and the art is used to create a spiritual projection. Astral Projection Tapping into the vast expanse of cosmic energy with the help of the Tree of Time, Korra was able to bend the energy within herself to create an astral projection of her spirit. Despite not having been bound by a corporeal form, the projection was able to both inflict and sustain great physical damage and utilize bending. The astral form was also capable of firing a beam of light similar to that of Vatu's. Although just a projection, due to being spiritually connected to the user, it is also affected by spirit bending. Granting Bending Energy bending can be used to bestow an individual with the power of bending. During the era of Rava, different lion turtles used this power to give inhabitants of their respective settlements a bending power when they left home to gather food. In 170 AG, the ability was used by Avatar Aang to restore Avatar Korra's bending, and Korra herself subsequently used it to restore Lin Beifong's bending, both of which had been severed by Amon. The Lion Turtles, however, are the only energy benders known to grant born non-benders bending abilities. Removing Bending An energy bender is capable of removing a person's bending permanently, unless restored by an energy bender. During the era of Rava, different Lion Turtles used this power to remove the granted bending ability from the inhabitants of their respective villages after they returned home from getting food. Aang later used this as well to remove Ozai's fire bending and Yakon's water bending. Spirit Energy Manipulation This is the ability to manipulate energy originating from the spirit world. Korra first used this technique to manipulate the energy of the pods encasing Jinora, Ryu, and his tour group after they were captured by hostile spirit vines. She later employed this same technique in the mortal world to deflect a lethal beam of energy fired by Kuvira's spirit cannon and save the metal bender. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.